Hey there, Sal here with Details Grow. Today I am sitting down with some of our team members. We have Alejandra, Dan, Anthony, and Claudia. Welcome to the fourth episode of our Highlights weekly podcast series thing. We still don't know what we're going to call it. I think it's a podcast. It might be a series, but in today's episode, we're going to talk about how to improve lead quality. And to dive right in, I want to talk about characteristics of high quality leads. And I think the first most important one is their budget, right? So their willingness and their readiness to buy your ceramic coating package, right? I think that's front and center, right? So if you don't consider their vehicle condition, you don't consider their vehicle age, whatever the case is, but they're willing to buy and get their car coated, I think that is like the highest quality lead, right? Because they see the value in it and they want to get their car protected or restored with paint correction. And then the other thing I want to mention is vehicle condition, right? So we have budget being first, somebody's willingness to buy. Next is their vehicle condition. So if somebody has a brand new vehicle, a 2024, 2025, and they're looking to get their vehicle ceramic coated, typically, historically, from what we've seen, those tend to be very high quality leads. They just got their vehicle and they're looking to keep it looking new for a lot longer. And then lastly, I would want to base it on interest level, right? So the last characteristic of a high quality lead is their interest level. And this will kind of tie into things that we talk about here later on in this episode. But when it comes to interest level, you want to look for decisiveness. You want to look for somebody who's willing to commit to an in-person consultation, putting down a deposit or scheduling with you. So I would, I would define those as the three characteristics of a high quality lead. So budget, the willingness to buy, the vehicle age, right? So if it's a new vehicle, they're looking to get it protected to look newer for a lot longer. But also when it comes to their vehicle age, if they have an older vehicle that they're looking to restore to get that showroom shine back, I would also kind of put that into that vehicle condition group. And then interest level, right? Somebody who is willing to commit is decisive. You want to look for those things. So to dive right in, as far, now that we know the characteristics of a high quality lead, I want to show you, I want to pinpoint some red flags with low quality leads to look for. So the first one is there, somebody who's really just price over quality, right? Somebody who's really focused on getting that number out of you. They want the cheapest coding, right? You, you guys all know that, that kind of person, right? And then again, the next red flag to look for is somebody's lack of commitment, right? So I, I think it starts with scheduling a phone call, right? If somebody's kind of blowing you off and they're not really committing to that phone call, I think that's a big red flag. Same thing with in-person consultation appointments. They keep rescheduling or they don't show even down to booking. So those are things that you want to look for is just lack of commitments. And then also to get more specific with that point, I would also look for people who give you vague answers. Right. So if you ask somebody like when they want to hop on a call and they don't give you a concrete date and time, that is a red flag because that kind of goes back to their lack of commitment. OK. OK. And then the last point would be focusing too much on price over quality. So, again, back to that first point, that person who's just hammering you for the lowest price possible. That is probably the biggest red flag that I just want to double click on because that person, you know, there's a lot of people who kind of just want that number. They're curious. They're shopping around. They're not really serious. I think that would be a red flag customer. But I want to caveat that because not everybody who is looking for a price knows exactly what they're getting themselves into with a ceramic coating, right? They don't understand the benefits. They don't get the value. So there is a little bit of room for educating them on that which we'll kind of go into here in a little bit. So now that we know the characteristics of a high quality lead and red flags to look out for, I'm going to pass the mic over to Claudia. What are the two key questions, Claudia, that you need to get from a lead to see whether or not they're a high quality lead? Yes. So the first one being the how soon they want to get the coding done. So these go back to what we talked in the beginning about the red flags and the lack of commitment and the vague answers. Because if they're sure that they want to do that in a certain timeline, you can see they're serious about it. They actually want to do it. 
But if they just give you like random reasons, they don't. They just say yeah. no. I want to do it soon, but I don't know when. No real dating time. Yeah. <laughs> no real dating time. It's just a no, no, don't run the other way. So that's that. That's super important. And because even if they say like no, I want to get this done like in the summertime, like six months from now, they already given you a timeline. Even if it's not like tomorrow or next week yeah they, and they give you a reason of why they want to do it and it's because it's the summertime because the sun and and everything else yeah they're on vacation they're traveling day. whatever the case is yeah exactly so they already know they already know and you can feel the secure in their voice and actually when people don't are, are not serious about it you can you can hear the hesitation yeah. on their voice when they talk and it's like you're like well like uh don't <laughs> and even if they do have some hesitation, I think that the key thing to look for is their decisiveness, right? So somebody can be unsure on when they're looking to get it done, but as long as they're like decisive and they're confident, they're secure in that answer, that's still a very positive sign. So if somebody says, hey, I'm not really sure, but I'm just kind of diving into everything when it comes to coding I'm doing my research, I'm getting quotes, but I'm looking to get this done within the next month or two, right? So... That's still a good timeline. They're sure of that timeline and they're just doing the research. So you want to be able to give them all that information for them. You basically want to give them everything they need to know when they're doing that research. So one, you'll be a good source of information. And two, they're going to be an informed buyer. So Claudia, what is that second question to ask those leads? Yes. So what is the main reason you're considering doing the ceramic coding? And that goes back to what we talked before, like educating the client, because people may come to you and not know about what a ceramic coating does, its benefits. Yes. And they're recurring to you as a source of information. Or they already know what a ceramic coating is, but they want to like, you know, have more reasons on why they should do it. So yeah. if they're sure about it, they no, I want to get my ceramic coating done because of this, this, and that, and these reasons. Okay, you know that they have done <laughs> the research. They know what they're talking about, and they want basically, you know, talk with you, and so you can give them more information or more confirmation of why they should do it. Yeah, and just to kind of expand on that, Claudia, I think asking why they're looking to get their vehicles ceramic coated is a key question because it kind of gives you an insight as to what they know when it mm -hmm. comes to ceramic coatings, right? So what do they know up to now when it comes to the information that they're looking at? Because again, when somebody's doing their research into ceramic coatings, they're going to be reading blog articles, right? They're reading a ton of blog articles. They're watching YouTube videos. They're shopping around. Yeah. For, they're getting all this information that can kind of overlap and conflict with each other, right? So they're either getting the wrong information or outdated information, right? Because the exactly. technology from coatings has improved a lot since it first came to market. So, and also you want to set the right expectations, right? You want to know what they know so far, what they're kind of expecting to get out of that coating so you can kind of realign that, right? So if a lot of the research that they're seeing is with a lot of the old information of ceramic coatings, right? You want to be able to update them and kind of reset those expectations better. So those yeah. are two questions. Again, just to recap, when are you looking to get this done and why? Those are the two key questions because that lets you know everything you need to know about whether or not that lead is a high quality lead. So with that being said, Alejandro, what have you found so far to be best when it comes to packaging and pricing? Yeah, the best way you have to give them the price and the information of the package is that you don't want to confuse your lead, okay? So yes. the best way yes. is just to help your client offering just two to, to three packages, okay? Because if not, if you offer like four, five, six, the lead is just going to be uh, confused, okay? And they're yes. going to start uh, mixing all the information and maybe you are seeing in a computer in your cell phone, but they are just hearing it through the cell phone. So maybe they are taking notes, but Maybe they don't, maybe they are in the streets walking, whatever. So yeah. the most efficient way is just to have three packages, one that is the basic, a medium one, and a premium. 
and yes. having um, the characteristics of each package so so clear for you and for your client okay and explain everything that comes with each package and how you are going to make the process uh, yeah. for the client to understand everything that you are offering. yeah exactly so you definitely do not want to have an a la carte setup right you don't want to let the lead pick and choose the longevity of the coding the paint correction type right exactly. whether or not it includes a decon or not right so when you give somebody that many options especially if you're giving that to them over the phone or over text, it's just a lot of information. It's too much information, right? To where they're like, yeah. okay, I have all these options in front of me. I'm a little bit overwhelmed. In fact, I'm even more confused than I was before we hopped on the call. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. that's why having simplified packaging really makes the biggest difference with your sales, yeah. with your advertising. It just helps if somebody goes into that phone call knowing, you know, that you have an entry-level package, you have a mid-tier package, and you have a premium package. So with that being said, I'm going to pass the mic over to Anthony to talk about how to kind of incorporate all of this that we're talking about into the sales process. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, you will get a lot of leads, you know, and they, they will be asking for special offers that they're seeing on your ads. And this is where yes. you can come in and say, Yes, take advantage of this special offer, whether it's the two hundred dollars off yes. that we put in your that in your ads, or another special offer that can be offered with an in-person consultation. So saying something like, "Oh yeah, so you know, there's this offer for this coding," or you can also take advantage of this other offer if you come in for that in-person consultation. So yes. you know, being able to provide offers for leads, I think is very important. That way there's an incentive, but also a time frame included to make sure to make sure that the leads will take advantage of it and not wait on that offer. We want to make them feel like it's urgent and that they need that coding. Yes. Another thing that I wanted to add to that was, you know, and this goes back to previous highlight calls. When you do include the offers, don't come off as desperate. You don't want to turn off the client and you know, you want to be secure in the things that you are selling, the, the offers that you are giving. We don't want the lead to feel like they're sensing desperation or that yeah. there's something fishy going on. We want them to make them feel secure and make them feel like that offer that you are going to give them is very much worth it as well. Yeah. And I, I want to expand on this because this is, I think special offers help a lot in the sales process. It doesn't have to be a dollar amount. It could be an added bonus. Whatever special offer you come up with, I think is key to use in the sales process because it's going to help you kind of like people are looking around for pricing and they want to get the best price. They want to get the best value. And if you can convey that, you want to be able to make sure they go with you versus somebody else. So that's where having a special offer, like if somebody's comparing quotes and they see that your offer includes, you know, three more things than somebody else's offer or their quotes, they're more likely to go with you just based on that, even if it is not technically a special offer, right? So best way I can illustrate it is with pricing, right? If you give somebody a $200 discount and you adjust for it in your pricing, you're not losing any money, right? You're not going below yep. your threshold. But the lead feels like, wow, this person's giving me $200 off if I book within the next two days, right? So that's where it kind of creates that urgency and it creates that incentive. So great points, Anthony. I'm going to pass the mic over to Radu. Can you talk about how all of what we're talking about can be incorporated with the ad side of things? Sure. So two, two main things that come to mind. The first one is the educational aspect. And we keep talking about this. Uh, when I say educational aspect or educational type videos, uh, think about it like this. Uh, a lead is going to watch a video. You need to take that lead from point A to point B. Point yes. A, they don't know about ceramic coatings. They don't know about who you are as a business, maybe about your services. And then from point A, through these videos, you're going to educate them. And then they'll know mm -hmm. more about who you are as a business, more about your services, more about ceramic coating especially, so all the benefits, maybe the price and all that. So then by the time they jump on a phone call with you, they already know pretty much all of it. It's just a matter of uh, scheduling the job. So that's the main idea. Now you can do it through videos in which maybe you can be in front of the camera explaining all the things, 
because when people see your face and they hear your voice, it builds trust. And uh, you're, you're slowly going to become a local detailing celebrity. So yes. it will snowball, it will snowball and it's going to work in your favor. Exactly. And uh, that's the main one. I would say that's the main one. The second one, let's say maybe you're not comfortable in front of the camera. You want to skip that part for now. I would say it's consistency. So uh, maybe you can make a video when you're polishing the vehicle, applying the ceramic, you don't need to talk about it, but you might not make the perfect video off, right off the bat. So in that, in that case, consistency, making maybe one video every single week, testing that video, maybe two a week, if it's possible, making those videos and being consistent on the video content might help you bring in more leads and not, it might not be as high of a quality as the ones in which you're in front of the camera, but it's a great starting point. So yeah, yeah, all of those tie in with these, with this consistency and if possible, educating, uh, leads on camera yes. or off camera. Yeah, one thousand percent. I want to double click on that point that you talked about, Radu, when it comes to educational content and why it's so important. And we've talked about this before, but I, I think when you have good educational videos where you're showcasing your shop, you're showcasing who you are as a person, this is your competitive advantage. Yeah. Because think yeah. about somebody who's shopping around for quotes, right? They're getting all different price points. Ultimately, you know that that person is making that decision based on price alone, right? without considering quality, how long you've been in business, all those things, right, that really matter. When you do educational videos where you're in front of the camera, you get to introduce yourself to people at scale, right? Yeah. So this is why Radu is talking about the celebrity aspect. With clients who do these kind of videos, we hear it all the time. Man, I got stopped at Costco. I got stopped at, you know, this place. Whatever the case is, like, yeah. they're, the fact that they're taking up that much not market share, mind share is super key because when somebody is not even in the market to get their car ceramic coated, but you know, you spark, you plant that little seed in their head and it grows, that person, you becomes their default option, right? You become yeah. the, the go-to person by default just because of how much mind share that you have taken up in your market. So think about that competitive advantage right off the bat is just by putting yourself out there, just by getting in front of the camera, just by educating people, you're manufacturing the highest quality lead possible because you're introducing yourself to people who didn't know who you were in the beginning. They didn't know your logo. They didn't know your business name. They didn't even know about ceramic coatings, but now you're introducing somebody into all of that. You're becoming their go-to person. You're showcasing your personality, right? You're showcasing your quality of work. You're becoming the go-to person and think about like how big of an advantage you will get, especially if you're in a very competitive market like Florida, like Texas, like California, yeah. right? Like Canada. So this is why those educational videos make the biggest impact. So with that being said, I'll wrap up today's episode on ways to improve lead quality things to look out for, red flags to watch out for, how to incorporate that into your sales process. Then Salvador here with Details Growth, sitting down with Alejandra, Dan, Anthony, Claudia. We'll see you next week. Have a good week. Bye-bye.